This Pulse News Update is brought to you by REMAX, Canada's leading real estate organization. Hello once again, Dean Malberg with this Pulse Sports Update on an always hectic Friday night on, uh, on the sporting scene. A whole whack of games in the NHL as well as a few in the WHL. The Weekings were uh, at home tonight to the Calgary Hitman hoping to not only extend their winning streak but to remain in first place they would need a victory to do so over the hitmen we'll see how they did nhl tonight the winnipeg jets were winners over the hartford whalers but we're going to start off the highlight package between the buffalo sabers and the new york rangers two tough guys get it started to be darren langdon hammering on rob ray at about the blue line one nothing for the Rangers. Our floater of the night, courtesy of Mike Pekka, beats everybody, including Glenn Healy, to tie the game at one. Rangers on the power play. Leach would take the shot. It'd be Adam Graves getting not one, but two shots at it in front. He'd beat Hashik. That tied the game at two. Watch the feed now by former Week King Ray Ferraro. He would set up Pat Verbeek. My dad could have scored this one with a two-liter of root beer in one hand and a bag of salt and vinegar in the other. That made it 3-2. The Rangers out in front. The Hashik man gets into it giving Eric Lacroix a little love tap. Then Glenn Healy gives Matthew Barnaby a Sherwood sandwich. Michael Groshek, lots of shushes in there. Reincarnated goal scorer since leaving the Jets. He would tie it at three as we go on to OT. Hashik, the man. See it, wouldn't want to be you. This one ended up in a 3-3 tie. The Devils and the Flyers. Physical Phil Housley with his new teammates. And then it'd be Ziggy Palfy starting it off. A bit of a garbage goal here. His first centering shot is stopped. The second one goes in off Brodeur. 1-0 for the Isles. On to the second. Darius Kasparita's shot hits a stick in front, bounces back to Wendell Clark. He would snare the rebound and sweep it home right there to give the Isles a 2-0 lead. Then it'd be Mr. Riche. That is a shot. It's only his 12th of the year, but a beauty. Made it 2-1. And then it'd be the Devils' Mike Pelusa. Watch him with the puck at the top of your screen. He scores the goal, but gets hammered by Darius Kasparitis. He's uh, in a little bit of pain here, as you can see. His, pair, his uh, peers stick up for him, but it looked to be a pretty good check to me. On to the third now. John McClain, all the time in the world to score this one. That made it 4-2. Look at Mike Milbury, Islander coach. You know, if you guys are going to score, you're going to need one of these. I'm guessing he's got a fine and suspension on the way. Devils win 6-2. Flyers and the Senators. Second period, no score. Randy Cunningworth out in front to Alexa Yash, and he would score to make it 1-0. Still in the second, it'd be Anatoly Semenov feeding that sniper, Sean Podine. He would beat Damian Rose to tie the game at one. The Flyers would grab the lead. Bob Corkum in front to Fox Warren, Manitoba native. Pat Falloon who buries it to give the Flyers a 2-1 lead. The Senators would tie it. It'd be Deshane, Teratic Bonk, and Bonk, just like that. We're tied at two. What a great name. Bonk on to the third. It's a close one. Sean Podine again. Some doubt on this one, but you can see it kind of crosses the line. That's your winner. Flyers win 3-2. Wheat Kings and the Hitmen tonight started up in the second. Calgary up 1-0. Great feed there to Darren Van Owen. Thank you, he says. It's 1-1. Still more from the Weeds. It's Van Owen picks up the puck. He would feed Dorian Anik in the slot all day to make that play. That made it 2-1. On to the third, and the Wheat Kings turn it on. A mad scramble out in front. Bobby Brown all over the rebound beats Aaron McDonald. The Wheat Kings in control by a score of 3-1. to one. And while the crowd is still celebrating that goal, it'd be Anik again. His backhand would beat Aaron McDonald. In case you don't follow hockey, that's a bad goal. 4-1. The Wheat Kings in control, but then bad news for the Wheats. Watch Andre Lupandin. He slips, and it would be Jesse Razanzov's skate crashing into Lupandin's left knee. LePandon, as you can see, in a lot of pain. He left the game on a stretcher, and the early word is he is done for the season. That is terrible news for the Wee Kings. Brandon later lead at 5-1. Anik would cap off the night. Kurtz from the point. His shot is tipped by Anik. That's his third of the night. The Wee Kings beat the Hitmen 6-1. Okay, so the Wee Kings did their part in holding up their spot, their first overall spot in the Eastern Division. The bad news, so to speak, is that the Prince Albert Raiders defeated the Tri-City Americans by a score of five to two? So the margin of uh, the margin of lead in first for the Wee Kings is still a mere one point over Prince Albert. Other scores from the dub: it's Kamloops over Regina two to one, and Prince George defeats Seattle by a score 
of 5-2. BU basketball, it is the GPAC semifinal, and Brandon takes a one-game-to-none lead in the best of three, defeating the Winnipeg Westman 76-48 tonight at the BU gym. In the MAHA Intermediate E-Hockey playoffs tonight, it was the Souris Elks defeating the Kenton Cougars by a score of 6-4, to and with that, Souris wraps up their best of three two straight. That'll do it this time around. We'll have more highlights and final scores for you. Not coming up in one hour. We'll see you at 12. This Pulse News Update is brought to you by your local co-op. Discover the many benefits of co-op membership today. Hi, once again, Dean Wahlberg back once more with uh, this, uh, this Pulse Sports Update. It will be your final one of the evening. And uh, we've uh, pretty much got a handle on everything in and around West Man and on the big scene. Plenty of hockey tonight. We're going to start things off with uh, some provincial E playoffs. It was Reston defeating McCreary by a score of 9-7. to MEHA intermediate E playoffs. It was Souris over Kenton by a score of 6-4 to with the victory. Now Souris wraps up that series with a sweep, two games to none. The, uh, the basketball story tonight, BU basketball, the GPAC semifinals taking place at the BU gym. Great start for the playoffs for the Brandon Bobcats. They picked up a 76-48 victory over the Winnipeg Westman. So now the Bobcats have got a one-game-to-none lead in that series. WHL tonight, the Brandon Wee Kings were hoping to, if not extend, then at least hold on to their, uh, their no number one spot in the Eastern Division. They led Prince Albert going into tonight by one point. Both teams were in action. It was the Saskatoon Blades taking on the Prince Albert Raiders. But the Weekings were going to have to take care of things back here at home. They were hosting the Calgary Hitmen. We'll start it up in the second. Calgary up 1-0. Corey Sarin, what a great feed to Darren Van Owen. Thank you, Van Owen was heard saying. It's 1-1. Still more from the Weekings. Van Owen would pick it up, and he would return the favor this time to Dorian Anik. Anik with the goal gives the Weeks a 2-1 lead. On to the third, and the Weeks turn it up. Watch Bobby Brown from his stomach, lifts it over Aaron McDonald. The Weeds out in front now by a score of 3-1. to one. And while the crowd is still digging that goal, it'd be Anik. He would break away, but what a weak goal. Look at McDonald. Man, he's got to have those ones. Weed Kings out to a 4-1 lead. But then things turn sour. Watch Andre Lupandin's left knee. It buckles underneath him and is smashed by the skate of Jesse Rosanzoff. Lupandin obviously in a great amount of pain left on a stretcher, did not return, and obviously he is done for the season. Brandon would get their minds back in the game. Justin Kurtz would take the point shot, and Dorian Anik would complete his first ever Brandon Wee King hat trick as the Wheats defeat the Hitmen 6-1. to one. On to the NHL, it was the Winnipeg Jets on the road in Hartford to face the Whalers. Bad start for the Jets. It would be Brendan Shanahan walking in, and Nikolai Habibulin is beaten short side to give the Whalers a 1-0 lead. The Jets would rally on the power play, a mad scramble in front. Norm McIver would pick up the loose puck right there and beat Sean Burke through the maze of people somehow to tie the game at one. On to the second, Igor Korolev shot a stop, but Chad Kilger is there for his second goal as a Jet to make it 2-1, but the Whalers would come back. Jeff Sanderson out for a skate would find Andrew Castles all alone at the side. No chance for Habby. This game is tied at two. The Jets come back, though. Teppo Newman and shot is deflected in front by Eddie Olchick. That's Olchick's 23rd of the year. The Jets out in front. 3-2, to two, baby. They extend the lead. It'd be Olchick again, this time in front. To Keith Kachuk, stops it with the skate, puts it in. The Jets win a big one on the road by a score of 5-2. Buffalo and the New York Rangers, a lot of hitting in this one. First off, it'd be Darren Langdon hammering Rob Ray, and it's 1-0 for the Rangers. Watch the floater here. It goes through everybody, including Glenn Healy, somehow... It's Mike Pekka's goal to make it 1-1. Rangers on the power play. Brian Leach's shot is stopped. Adam Graves breaks out of a huge scoring slump to tie the game at two. Watch the feed now by Ray Ferraro. He would take it behind the net to Pat Verbeek, a man draped all over him. Hashik with no chance on the play. The Rangers out in front, 3-2. Watch Dominic Hashik. That's a huge two-hander. And then Glenn Healy, not to be outdone, gives Matthew Barnaby a little toothpick. Michael Groshek, he would get one crack at it. It stopped and then shelves the rebound. That tied the game at three. And we go on to overtime, but Dominic Hasek, as always, solid. This one ended up in a 3-3 tie. The Devils and the Flyers, there's Phil Housley with his new teammates. 
but it'll be the Islanders getting on top first. Ziggy Poffy's first centering shot is stopped, but the rebound goes in off Brodeur. Kind of a garbage goal, made it one nothing. On to the second, Darius Kasparaita shot, hits a stick in front, goes off a shoulder, but it'd be Wendell Clark there to snap home the rebound. Kind of a bad goal as well. Now made it 2 nothing. Then it would be Stefan Riche. What a cannon this guy has got. That's good for his 12th of the season to make it 2-1. The Devils, Mike Peluso gets hammered. Watch him take the drop pass. He lets it go top of your screen, but what a hip check by one of the best in hockey, Darius Kasparaitis. Obviously, Peluso in a lot of pain, and the Devils, well, they don't like that one bit. No, sir, they take it out on Kasparaitis. On to the third, look at John McClain. Someone's got to pick that guy up. He would score. Mike Milbury, needless to say, not in a good mood. Apparently has too much money, needs to pay an NHL fine. Devils win 6-2. Watch these highlights. The Flyers and the Sens, how many goals are scored on one-timers? That would be one by Alexa Yashin. That made it 1-0. Watch this one. It would be Semenov to Podine. That's another one. Game tied at one. The Flyers would grab the lead. It would be Bob Corkum. He would take the puck behind the net out in front to Pat Falloon. Another one. He buries it. That's 2-1 for the Flyers. The Senators would tie it. It would be Deshane to Radic Bonk. That'd be another one. We're tied at two now. On to the third, and it's a close one here. Sean Podine, a they had to go to the video replay on this one. It does cross the goal line. The Flyers win this one three to two. Okay, some other scores from around the NHL tonight. It was the Avalanche over the Blackhawks by a score of 5-3, and the Pittsburgh Penguins defeat the Edmonton Oilers by a score of 5-4. Five five one game still on the go has the Lightning leading the Sharks late in the third period. I believe that's all for the NHL, WHL tonight. Uh, the Brown and Wheat Kings, as I mentioned, picked up the victory, a big one, 6-1 over the Calgary Hitmen. Could have extended their lead to three points, but they did not because the Prince Albert Raiders were victorious at home over the Tri-City Americans by a score of 5-2. So the Wheat Kings maintain their one-point lead in the Eastern Division. Next action comes this Sunday evening, 6 p.m. at the Keystone against the Saskatoon Blades. One quick note. It'll be rain check day on Sunday. Any ticket you haven't used prior to now, any unused game ticket, of course, will be good for admission to Sunday's game. See you there. Have yourselves a good weekend. See you Monday night.